Hey, what's up guys? So happy 2017. It was a crazy year and I think that what we're going to talk about today just real quickly is 2016. Um, as you know, I struggled with cancer for a good part of 2016 and all, literally all, of 2015 um, with addition of a little bit of 2014 so it's been a crazy two years and you know that I vlogged you know all of my cancer journey uh, the second time I got diagnosed but I think what I failed to kind of mention or show was the difficult part of it all what I truly struggled with and you know when I did vlog or when I did talk with you guys, I would be realistic, but at the same time, I would not really bring any negativity into it. And so what I think I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about my struggles with cancer and not to bring any negativity or make anyone think that I wasn't or I'm not positive, but I just wanted to talk about how tough of a year I had. And it's crazy because you would think that 2015 was my hardest year, being that I got diagnosed um, and it was my first time dealing with cancer or knowing what to do and chemotherapy and everything like that. I have to admit, the towards the end of 2015 it was hard because uh, that's when I got the news that my cancer had came back after three months of remission, just three months. So yeah, 2016 was, was pretty hard. I vlogged with you guys when I did my bone marrow transplant and when I did uh, chemotherapy and radiation, but I never never told you how much that, that truly affected me or how much I really struggled with it. Um, so I thought I would. I just want you to know that if you're gonna go through it, or that you've been through it, that I have too, um, and that you're not the only one, it's gonna be hard. And I think it's only fair that I share with you how hard it really was, so that things aren't a surprise to you. But if you don't have cancer or anything like that, and you're just here to learn, or to know, or you're a family member or a caretaker, um, to know what that person is really going through. So when I had my bone marrow transplant. Uh, I vlogged that my my actual bone marrow transplant, but also when I was in the room. So I kind of showed you a little bit of the room that I was in, um, and it was basically like a 200 square foot room. It was probably the size of the room that I'm in now, <laughs> like literally this size. And I had a bathroom, and a bed, and a TV, and a chair. <laughs> And I was in that room for a whole month. Now what I did, which kind of made the time go by faster, it wasn't any easier because every day was honestly miserable, but uh, I brought my PlayStation with me. So if you're ever like inpatient, like inpatient, not inpatient, but inpatient in a hospital, uh, do things like that. Bring a PlayStation so you have things to do because a lot of hospitals only have so many channels. Um, but yeah, I was in there for an entire month. And when I was doing my high dose chemotherapy, I ended up getting mucositis. And if you don't know what mucositis is, is there's actually no, like, I'm not gonna say cure, but there's like no medication to make it better or make it go away or anything for it. So if you get mucositis, you just, you have it and you have to like go through it until it's over. So what that is, is it kind of makes you not able to use your mouth it makes the skin on the inside of your cheeks peel um, and your tongue too. Not only is that happening inside your mouth, also your entire digestive tract gets messed up. So your entire throat hurts. Um, I actually wasn't able to eat while I was in the hospital um, because I was inpatient for the bone marrow transplant January 5th, which was my one year anniversary that I got married to January 29th, which was my 21st birthday. So I was there for all the good times. So for about four days, 
because of the mucositis and which is a side effect of the high dose chemotherapy which is part of the whole bone marrow transplant I wasn't able to eat at all anything so what they do is they like hook you up to an IV and they like feed you like food like a nutritional bag thing into your body so that you're eating or whatever so for four whole days I wasn't able to actually consume any food or eat because it's impossible to swallow. Another horrible thing was I wasn't able to brush my teeth. The whole time I was inpatient, I was not able to brush my teeth because of the mucositis. It makes it impossible to do anything in your mouth. I couldn't, like literally, couldn't even eat, um, couldn't brush my teeth. So in the long term, that really has affected me a whole month without brushing my teeth along with chemotherapy, which is like rotting your teeth. So it's really messed me up long term with that even the way things taste, like I lost my my taste buds for a year or two and I just couldn't taste the flavor of anything at all. Um, everything tasted like salty foam, like literally like when you get a mouthful of ocean water. And also I wasn't able to swallow at all the whole time. So what they gave me was like the tube that you get at the dentist office, you know, that you like spit into when you have water or whatever. I had that like literally by my side in the bed the whole time. Anytime I needed to spit or just swallow anything, I had to spit it to the tube because it pained me so much just to swallow my own saliva. That's how much pain I was in. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's just I never really shared, like I said, how difficult just that one month of my life was. And I think it's only fair to, to tell you and, and for you to be aware of it if you're going to go through it or anything like that. Just know that if you do struggle with that, just know also you weren't the only one because I did too. And another thing with the whole bone marrow transplant thing was they have like like a bedpan, but not for the bed. It's like for the actual toilet. It goes like on the toilet seat. And anytime you use the bathroom, like any time, like whether it's like number one or number two or whatever, you go inside this pan and your nurse has to like look at it, measure it, ask you questions about it. It's ridiculous. It's literally like your humanity is taken away from you. And it's crazy because I started to think like, wow, this is probably how like 85 year olds live. Like people that are like super old, how they're living and it's just, it's miserable. And it's honestly kind of embarrassing. So to have to do that at 20 years old is, is really crazy. And also when it comes to just in general, just showering, it's hard enough to get in a shower. And where I did my stuff at at Duke, it's a very old hospital, so literally every single time that I showered, the water would cut off in the middle of my shower. And I'd always be like hooked up too, so like where my, like, um, well I had a port and a Hickman. Um, I'd be like hooked up, have the cord over the shower. It's like hard to even wash yourself. And so that was like some of the most difficult things. I also had to do radiation, uh, which honestly ruined my skin. So I took some pictures that is still my skin today and my transplant was a year ago in January and it's January. So yeah, I'll put those pictures here again for you so you can see kind of what is still going on with me, kind of like long-term effects and just radiation. Honestly, I think radiation was the easiest thing that I had to do between the transplant and the chemotherapy, but it was still really difficult. They mark you with these these marks all over your skin and you kind of just feel dirty for the whole time. You never feel like you can really get clean when you have these markings all over your skin and stickers and this and that. And when you're doing your radiation, you literally just have to lay there still and you can't move for like 30 minutes and then your whole neck will go asleep, your shoulders, your arms, and the whole time you're just thinking like, oh my God, I can't wait to move my arms. I struggled with trying to figure out how to get back to normal or what really I just wanna do with my life now that I have it back, because really what cancer does is it just takes you out, out of your life and away from everything, and you kinda just lose control. So now that you know I'm given back control of it, it's like, what do, I, what do I want to do now? Like, I have no idea. And I think the hardest thing is trying to figure out where I fit in now. And it's like everyone's lives just kept moving and mine kind of got like frozen in time. So it's, it's really challenging to 
figure that out and that's kind of what I, I truly struggled with was just figuring out what do I do now? What do I even do for work or like who am I basically? But I just wanted you guys to know that I truly did struggle. I know people always say like, how are you so positive? And I love that you stayed so positive and this and that. And I just wanted to let you guys know that the reason why I am or always was so positive is because you're not really given a chance not to be. Like your only chance, and the only thing you really have control over at that point is your, your mood and how you act. Because if you're not positive, then how do you expect to get through your treatment or to get better? We all have bad days. No one ever has a perfect life or an easy life. Yeah, I know 2016 was definitely really hard for me. I was never able to really celebrate my 21st birthday. You know, little things like that. And just know if you're having a bad day, you're not the only one that has them. You're literally not alone. You just gotta think that there is more to life and more to this and you're going through what you're going through for a reason. And I think especially with cancer, when you're going through chemotherapy or anything like a bone marrow transplant, stem cell replacement, even just getting blood work or blood given to you or radiation or you're in the hospital, just know that there's a reason why and that reason is to make you better. So you just always have to remember that and I know you would you would think losing hair was hard for me, but there's always harder things. <laughs> uh, but there's always also easier things. So I just wanted to let you know that 2016 was a rough year. Um, and most of this talk was only about January for me. And then there was the rest of the time and all the side effects that stayed with me after that. and are still with me today, a year later, uh, but you know, it's 2017. I have a PET scan on the 5th of January, which is my anniversary again. Uh, so just wishing for the best results. 2017, it's gonna be good and hoping it will. But love you guys i have a super fun video for you next week like i'm so excited i want to share it already but you'll just have to wait so love you if you guys have any questions about anything you can just ask me or go to my facebook page um and i've been through it all so if you have, like i said any questions or just need any support or anything i've been through it all like literally <laughs> So don't be afraid to ask me because um, I'm going to be there to support you. But if you want to know the real sides of things and hear everything that I went through, then I'll tell you that too.